All right, hello y'all. So for this AB practice summative um, extra practice, let's start out with the heat energy problems. The first of these problems are mostly all gonna deal with the same one equation. Now that is Q equals MC delta T, where Q is the energy either absorbed or lost. M is the mass, usually in grams. C is the specific heat capacity measured in calories uh, per gram degree Celsius. And lastly, delta T is our change in temperature. Now we've been doing most of these with water, but we can do them with literally anything as long as we have the variables. So number one, calculate the heat. So we want Q is equal to MC delta T, required to heat 75 grams of aluminum, our mass being 75 grams, um, from 25 degrees Celsius to 85 degrees Celsius. So notice the point zeros. So 85.0 minus 25.0, that's a nice 60.0, three sig figs, 60.0 degrees Celsius. Um, now, aluminum is not water, so we can't just use one, but luckily we're given the C, which is 0 0.90 calories per gram degree Celsius. Our units cancel out and we are left with calories. When we go ahead and plug this in, we get 4050 calories. Now, unfortunately, we have two sig figs here, two sig figs here. So we need two sig figs. So we only want these first two. This five is going to round us up to a one. So we have a Q equals 4,100 calories. Make sure your sig figs are right. Make sure your units are right. Moving on, number two. Again, you have a 250 gram piece of copper. That's our M. You want to heat it from 30 to 150, calculate the amount of heat energy required. Again, we're looking for Q equals our mass, 250 grams. We have our heat capacity, which is 0 0.39 calorie gram degree Celsius. And we're heating it from 150.0 minus 30.0 grand total of 120.0 degrees Celsius, 120.0 degrees Celsius. When we plug this in, we 11700, Q equals 11700. Uh, again, we are reduced to two sig figs because of these two right here. So we're gonna go ahead and round ourselves up to 12000 calories. All right, again, we're gonna keep using the same equation. Q equals our mass, 400 point grams. That tells us we are at three sig figs because of that point. Our C is 0 0.58 calories, grams, degrees Celsius. And our change in temperature, 20 to 80, that is 60.0 degrees Celsius. And so when we solve this out, we get U equals 13920, which again, our cursed to sig figs is going to round us up to 14000 calories. We are going to continue with this throughout. So for the next following ones, I'm just going to write the equation and the answer, Q is equal to 100.0 times 0. Point, whoops, 0, 3, 1. I'll use parentheses, actually. Times 50.0. And we get U equals 155. Reduced down to 160 calories, accounting for sig figs. Moving on. This next one is Q equals 300 point 
times 0 0.056 calories grams degrees Celsius times 100 point zero degrees Celsius, we get Q equals one six eight zero. For two sig figs, we get one seven zero zero calories. All right, number six changes things up a little bit. And so we're gonna have to be careful. You want to heat 150 grams of water. So our mass is 150 grams which is initially at 25 degrees Celsius. If you supply 4,500 calories of heat energy, oh my goodness, we're given this one, 4,500. And this is water, which means our C is 1.00 calories gram degree Celsius. What is the change in temperature? Because we're asking for the change, not the final or the initial, this doesn't even matter. So we're going to divide 4,500 by 150 and 1. This will all cancel out. And when we do this, we get our change is, this one we can actually do pretty easy, 4,500 4, divided, 450 divided by 15. Our change in temperature is 30 point degrees Celsius. 7 follows along the same idea. A 500 gram block of ice at negative 20 degrees Celsius is placed in a room at 25 degrees Celsius. So it's gonna warm up. How much heat energy is added to raise the temperature of the ice to zero? So negative 20 to zero, it is still ice. So this is water, we get to say one degree, 1 1.00 calorie, gram degree Celsius. We are raising it 20.0 degrees Celsius. So this is just 500 times 20, which is equal to 1, 0, 0, 0, 0 calories. Now, the issue you might have here is this is 500 point. We need to Three sig figs, actually. We have three sig figs with each of our value. Three here, three here, and three here. So how do we turn this into three sig figs? Well, we then have to convert to our good friend scientific notation, 1.00, that's our three sig figs, times 10 to the fourth, and that is in calories. All right. Number eight, you want to cool 200 grams of boiling water to room temperature, how much heat energy needs to be removed? Q equals 200 point one calorie gram degree Celsius. We can say 0 0.00, zero. give that some extra sig figs. And we are changing the temperature from 100 to 25. That is a negative 75 degree change. So uh, to keep actually 75.0 degrees Celsius. So this is 200 times one times seven. This gives us an answer of Q is negative 15000 uh, calories. So we lose 15,000 calories. But again, we need three sig figs. So we're going to say 1.50 times 10 to the fourth calories. Q equals. All right. Now we have our challenge problems. So this is where we're going to be combining the heat diffusion or vaporization and this general temperature change. A 250 gram ice cube at minus 10 is placed in a calorimeter calorimeter and heat is added until it becomes a liquid at zero degrees Celsius. What energy is added to the water? So we have ice, which goes from minus 10 degrees Celsius to zero. Then we have ice at zero degrees Celsius transition to water, liquid water. 
at zero degrees Celsius. So we need two equations here. Q equals MC delta T and Q equals delta H of fusion because we're melting times M. All right. So this first one is 250 grams times one calorie per gram degree Celsius times 10 degrees Celsius, 10.0. The second equation is equal to our delta HF, which you can find in our notes of fusion is 80 point calories per gram. And our mass again is 250 grams. We're going to find both of these, QF and just Q. So when we go ahead and calculate, we get Q on this side, the temperature needed to raise it, or the heat needed to raise it is 2500 calories, correct number of sig figs, and our heat of fusion is way more at 20,000 calories. Again, we need two sig figs, so only up to here is significant. When we add these values together, we get 22,500 calories. But we have to remember that only these first two digits are thousands and ten thousands place are significant. So again, thousands and ten thousands place significant. We're going to get a total value of the heat energy needed as 23,000 calories. And that is our answer. Moving on to number 10. You have a one liter container filled with water at 90 degrees Celsius. You remove 3,000 calories of heat to the water. What is the final temperature? This one's challenging for a different purpose. For this one, we have to use dimensional analysis, which we haven't used for a bit. But assume the density of water is one gram per milliliter and we have a specific heat capacity. So we first have to find the mass. We need the mass because Q equals MC delta T. Well, we need a mass. We don't need a volume. And right now we have a volume, one liter. We can fill out most of this equation. Minus 3,000 calories is equal to some mass M times one calorie gram degree Celsius. And we know that we are going to start at 90 degrees Celsius. But where are we going to end? We have our T final minus T initial. And our T initial, once again, is 90 degrees Celsius. We have two variables missing from this equation. So we can find the mass. We're going to start out with one liter. One liter is 1,000 milliliters. If we have 1,000 milliliters, and we know that for every one gram, it's one milliliter, and I'm getting that from right here, we actually have 1,000 grams. So we can plug that in, and we get minus 3,000 is equal to 1,000 times one gram, calorie, gram, degree Celsius, is equal to some change in T, and we'll come back to that one. We'll just divide by a thousand, divide by a thousand. Uh, we'll divide by a thousand times one, divide by a thousand times one. That gets rid of this stuff. And we get our change in temperature is minus three degrees Celsius. It's really not that much. So if we started at 90 degrees and we subtract three, we end up at 87 degrees Celsius. And our sig figs actually come out okay because we should only have one sig fig from the 1,000 and the 3,000. And then we're just subtracting. And when we're subtracting, our three degrees Celsius is exact to the decimal point, nothing past. Our 90 is more exact. So that's gonna just make sure that our 87 answer here is 87 with nothing else. All right, moving on to procedure and variables. 
in a calorimetry setup like the one we had in class, below is an example of a portion of the procedure. Turn on the scale, place the can on the scale, then add water, record the mass. Attach the can to the calorimetry apparatus, place a the thermometer in the can, touching the bottom. Ensure that the height of the can is set to best catch the flame. What errors can arise from the setup? Name two errors that could arise and explain how this would affect the overall result of the experiment. There are two very obvious errors. Number one, place a can on the scale, then add water, then record. This means that our mass, mass is actually not just water, it is can plus water. That's wrong. We need the mass of our water for our calorimetry data because we can't calculate the mass with the can unless we're measuring the mass and the temperature that the can is also changing to. Further up, uh, if our mass is higher, if we have a larger mass, that's going to propagate into our Q equals MC delta T equation. And we will therefore get a larger but wrong value for Q. If we have a larger mass in this equation, then we're going to calculate a larger Q, which is wrong. All right, the second error is shown right here. Place the thermometer in the can touching the bottom. Ooh, no. If the thermometer, oops, thermometer touches the bottom, then our temperature final will be too high because we're going to record the temperature of the can, record T of can. Once again, that is going to create a larger but wrong value for Q. So those are the two big errors. I'm sure you can find some other minute ones, but those are the errors as well as the explanation. And that's specifically how it would affect the overall experiment. Both of these would create larger wrong values for Q. All right, in an experiment, we set up the data table shown below. What is the independent variable and what is the dependent variable? Well, the independent variable is the thing that we change. So our independent variables will be the foods. We're changing the foods. That's what we control. Our dependent variable is what we're measuring off that. And it may seem like it's the energy released. And that is what we're calculating. But our dependent variable isn't actually on this table. It's a summation of the initial and final. It is our change in temperature. So our dependent variable is change in temperature. This one's a little harder because you have to derive that. From there, you can get to our secondary dependent variable, with, which is actually energy release. But you need to make those steps. Show me that you understand what we are measuring. All right. In the data table above, values for energy were found, but they may have been calculated wrong. What is the data table missing to ensure that energy values will be calculated correctly, assuming the spe specific heat capacity of the water is one calorie per gram? There are so many answers to this. We can calculate it wrong in so many ways, but I specified units here. And you'll notice there's no units, no units, no units, no units. The mass of the water could be measured in kilograms. If it were measured in kilograms, we cannot use this. If it was measured in ounces, again, we cannot use this value. So the main big thing wrong is there are no units. That's going to be so wrong. It's going to make sure we need to make sure that when we calculate our things that we have units. We need units. There's a lot of other things wrong with that data table. It's pretty basic. We don't have the mass of the foods. We don't have uh, sources of error. And I might ask you for sources of error in our calorimetry setup. That was a really bad setup that we had, but it worked kind of okay. We had our fire under it our thermometer probe 
that measured our temperature. But on this setup, things could go wrong. We could have heat loss, heat loss. The can was open. Water could have evaporated. Water loss, which would have changed our mass. Our thermometer could have been broken. We don't know. Thermometer could be broken. We didn't test to make sure it was correct. We didn't test it with another control. The can can absorb energy. Can absorbs energy. We know that's true. We could even have incomplete combustion. Incomplete combustion. Where not all the chemical energy turns into food energy. These are all sources of air of our experiment. Anyways, I hope this helped. Have a great